So we're currently on section 3.5, and that is called the five number summary. To go along with the five number summary, there's this idea of a box pop. And here's a definition from your book of the five number summary, and I'm just going to get rid of this part, which we don't really need. So the five number summary is a way to talk about your books using the the term set of data here. I'm not a huge fan of the calling the five number summary a way to describe a set of data because I could have a data set here that has two quantitative variables, say age and weight. With these two, two quantitative variables, age and weight, we might want to summarize either one of them and we use the five number summary to do that. Just to get the terminology right, this entire thing that I've got here is the data set. And I have two variables there. They're both quantitative and I might want to summarize what's going on with these variables using the five number summary. Okay, so what is the five number summary? It is shockingly five numbers, and it's usually given in this order. We would give the minimum data value and Q1 and the median data value, and then Q3 and then the maximum data value. So we're going to be just summarizing a numeric variable with these five numbers. Let's do a very silly example with just the numbers one through 10. So using my calculator, I have discovered that the first quartile is 3, the median is 5.5, and the third quartile is 8. So we could collect these along with the minimum value and the maximum value to do the five number summary of this data set, or this variable rather. And a lot of times we'll just give this in order, we, we won't label what these numbers are. We know that the first number in the five number summary is the minimum. The second number is Q1. The third number is the median. The fourth number is Q3. And the fifth number is the maximum. So here I have the five number summary. We have Q3 here and we have Q1 here. And just as a reminder, we can call the difference between them, the interquartile range, which basically tells you the width of your middle 50% of your data, which means it's a measure of variability. So we've talked about histograms as ways to display quantitative variables, and here's another way, which is a box plot. And this box plot comes from the five number summary. Here's an example of what one might look like. Say I had a group of individuals and I'm looking at their weights. The box plot has a big box and these little things that come off it. Some people refer to these as the whiskers. And then inside the box, there's this line. And sometimes below the whiskers, we might have a little dot that looks like this. Well, I'm being a little sloppy here. Let's give a range for what I'm talking about. Say we have weight in pounds here, and maybe we have some males that range between 130 and 200 pounds. So I just want to give a context. And what this box plot shows is the bottom of the box here is the first quartile. It's Q1. This line in the box is the median for that variable. So this would be the median weight of our group of individuals. Generally speaking, box plots are showing the distribution of a sample. So we've got the first quartile of that sample, we've got the median of that sample, we've got the third quartile of that sample shown here. So that's where the box is. It's really the middle 50% of our data. So we make it kind of fat and big to remind ourselves that this is where the heart of all this, these numbers are. Sometimes might think of this as being almost like a person, and this is their torso. The middle 50% is the most important stuff. This is where all the guts are. Up here, 
and down here are values of our data. But let's look at this dot right here. This dot is what's called an outlier. An outlier is a data point. It's an extreme value. We've used that term before. Maybe we had somebody that weighed quite a bit less than the rest of our group of people. They might be considered an outlier. So what is this point here? It's the smallest non-outlier. Sometimes that smallest non-outlier might actually be the minimum value. But if we have a point that happens to be extremely small, then this bottom whisker is not the minimum value of that data set. It's just the smallest value that's not an outlier, which means this top value here is the largest value that's not an outlier. So you want to be familiar with how we figure out whether something is extreme or not. This is a science. We're not going to just use our judgment, we are going to have a scientific rule to determine whether something is an outlier or not. And that rule is called the 1.5 times IQR rule. So that's a box plot. A box plot is a way to show a quantitative variable and it gives you a lot of information really quickly. It shows you where the middle 50% of the data is located. That's in the box. It gives you a measure of center that's the line in the middle of the box here, which is the median. And it also shows us, are there any outliers indicated by dots? And then it also shows us the entire range of the data set because it has every single data point ends up being shown on here. So I can figure out that, hey, for this particular variable, the maximum was up here and the minimum value was down here. So that's kind of nice because histograms, you don't get to see exactly what number corresponded to the maximum and minimum, but with box plots, you do get to see that. So they have advantages and disadvantages versus histograms. And again, a box plot is tightly correlated to the five number summary because all the important values on the box plot come from the five number summary. Even these dots here, the outliers, are determined by using the five number summary, using the interquartile range, which you can calculate from the five number summary. Let's go through an example of using some actual data to grab a five number summary and also make a box plot. We have some data here which are interest rates. This, these are important numbers. These are numbers that describe how money in a bank changes, which could be either in your favor if you're saving money or against you if you're borrowing money. So we've got interest rates charged by 10 credit card companies. And it says construct a box plot. Well, in order to do that, that means we need five number summary and we also need to know, are there any outliers? Because outliers on the box plot will appear as individual points. So here's the data. We have a bunch of interest rates on the right. There's 10 of them. Always good to remind ourselves that that number 10 is the size of our sample and the symbol we use for that is N. And they've also given us a source here, which is nice. These are coming from the government. They're coming from the Federal Reserve. They've got the interquartile range here, which there, which is a difference in two numbers. And the value of it happens to be 2.4% for this. And you could find these values from sticking those 10 numbers into your calculator and using one var stats, which pops out Q1 and Q3 amongst other values. So now they're finding these cutoffs for whether something's an outlier or not, which we call the fences. And here are the two numbers that if we see any data points lower than 8.4%, those are going to be an outlier. And if we see any data points higher than 18%, those are going to be an outlier. And your book does kind of a disservice here by actually showing these fences. This is not typical. I don't want you to do this when you draw box plots. The fences are numbers, but in terms of our display, they're not actually part of our data. So I don't want to show them, and your book is showing them. So let's get rid of them. And another couple things I don't like about this thing are that we don't have a label here. Let's remind ourselves that these are interest rates. 
And also their box plot, they don't make the little whisker thingies. So there we are. You'll notice that there was one interest rate that happened to be an outlier. That was the interest rate of about six and a half percent. This Pulaski Bank and Trust Company's interest rate was unusually low. So here we are. There's that extreme value. We've got the value of Q3 represented on the top hand of the box, which I can actually use my calculator to find. They're not, they don't tell us in this example what this value is. So I'm going to take a second and put these numbers into my calculator. So after inputting those numbers into my calculator and doing one bar stats, and one more good thing to do would be to remind everybody that these numbers we're looking at are percents. The whole goal of a display like this is to show some story. And the story here is that we're looking at the percent of interest rates. And hey, this one interest rate is super low. That's interesting. Maybe you might want to try to get that credit card. I'm being a little sloppy here. It might be good to put units if I'm talking about what Q1, the median, and Q3 are. Usually we wouldn't have these labels here. I'm just reminding you that if you see the box plot, you should be able to know what about what the first quartile is, the median is, and the third quartile. It's obviously going to be a bit of estimating because if you don't have the actual values, you end up having to do something like this and say, ooh, looks like it's about nine point this value here, which is the smallest non-outlier data value, is like 9.8%, something like that. And it turns out that that value is exactly 9.9%. That's the Bank of Louisiana's interest rate there. That is the box plot, and it's a visual summary of a quantitative variable. In this case, it's a visual summary of interest rates. And just to remind you, I'll go ahead and throw up the five number summary so there it is, a lot of information going on here. We've got a visual display of a quantitative variable. We've got an idea of were there any unusual points for this variable? Were there, where's the middle 50% of the data? So that's basically it, that's a box plot. The fences are not part of the data. So our box plot should look like, show me any outliers, show Q1 and the median and Q3, show the whiskers and give a nice label and that's as best you can do also include a unit always include a unit so those are the five number summary and box plots